In today's video, let's investigate why 14 power n plus 11, where n is a positive integer, will never be a prime number. As usual, when dealing with questions like this, it might be instructive to write out a few small cases to see if we can detect a pattern. When n equals 1, the expression equals 25, which is 5 times 5. When n equals 2, we get 207, which is 3 squared times 23. We can continue further for a few examples, and it seems that 5 and 3 are factors of 14 power n plus 11 alternately. Ideally, it seems that we want to prove something along the line of 5 is a factor of 14 power n plus 11 when n is odd, and 3 is a factor when n is even. If we could prove something like this, then it is obvious that 14 power n plus 11 cannot be a prime number, since it will always have a factor of either 5 or 3. Before we attempt to prove this, let's take a detour to refresh some concepts about modulo arithmetic. If you do not know already, modulo arithmetic provides a handy shorthand for us to express the remainders of number easily. Definition-wise, we say that A is congruent to B modulo C if A minus B can be divided by C. Alternatively, you can understand it as A and B leaving the same remainder upon division by C. We have provided a few examples, which you can check and verify below, but I just would like to point out that numbers themselves can be negative. As an example, 62 is congruent to minus 1 modulo 3 because going back to our original definition, we have 62 minus minus 1 equals 63, which of course is divisible by 63. The final thing we need to know is that, given a congruence equation, we can freely raise both sides of a congruence to any positive power we like. You can see another example here in red, where we show that 62 power 4 is congruent to 1 modulo 63. Back to our earlier question, remember that we want to show that 14 power n plus 11 can be divisible by 5 and 3 alternately. To do this, let's express everything in modulo 3 and modulo 5. We first consider the remainder upon division by 3, or modulo 3. Note that, since 14 leaves a remainder of 2 upon division by 3, we can replace 14 with a 2. Furthermore, from our definition earlier, we know that 2 is congruent to minus 1 modulo 3, so we can further replace it to get minus 1 power n plus 2 modulo 3. You might wonder why we want to replace 2 with minus 1. Note that, we do so to simplify the calculations. It will be easier to see that minus 1 power 100 equals 1 than to calculate the remainder of 2 power 100 upon division by 3. Similarly, after we are done with modulo 3, we can consider the congruence now in modulo 5. Again, we use the fact that 14 is congruent to 4 modulo 5 and that 4 is congruent to minus 1 modulo 5 to justify the chain of congruences. Now, the only thing we need to do is to observe that when n is even, minus 1 power n plus 2 is 0 modulo 3, while when n is odd, minus 1 power n plus 5 is always 0 modulo 5. This allows us to deduce that 14 power n has a factor of 3 when n is even, and a factor of 5 when n is odd. Therefore, there's no way for 14 power n plus 11 to be a prime number at all. We have finished our discussion for the day. Hopefully, you see the power of modulo arithmetic and the idea of divide and conquer, achieved through separation of cases into odd and even cases of end. Please like the video and subscribe if you would like to see more content, and I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye.